Yo, what is that? Is that a salamander? Or a fish? It's a mud puppy! It's a mud puppy! Don't go nowhere. Don't go nowhere. Oh my goodness! Have a look at this! That's a mud puppy! I've never seen one of these before. On today's adventure, we're heading back to South Mississippi in search of some more rare river critters. There's lots of really interesting species that live along these river systems, and many of which that I've never found before. There's also a chance of finding some undescribed species here as well. These rivers are pretty understudied, so it's really interesting to see what can be found here. Now what I'm going to be looking for along here, mostly turtles, but you'll also get snakes that lay up on the logs. I look along the edges here, Soft shells will go and bury really quick along the edges, and uh, you'll just see a light lump where you can go and catch them. I'm also looking for a map turtle or musk turtle booking it, because uh, these rivers have some super rare map turtle species. You'll also get alligator snapping turtles wedged under logs, which obviously a bit more uncommon, but uh, most of the stuff in this river isn't super common. You're going to get rare species here, but there's not a lot of them. Obviously, these rivers have a lot of life in them, but it's very, very spread out. It takes a lot of traveling, walking, canoeing, or kayaking to really traverse these rivers well. But my gosh, is it gorgeous. I mean, this is, this is beautiful. This little guy, it's a crawfish. Mm. There we go. What are you? Have a look at this little guy. I think I know what this is, but they're pretty rare. I think that this is a painted devil crawfish. These are a pretty rare species to find in these rivers. They're actually endangered throughout the majority of their range. I'm not sure if they're endangered here. Oh, he's actually missing a leg there. It's kind of a bummer. This is not a full grown one of these. Now these guys are a river crawfish species and you can see that they've got huge pinchers. They're not like your typical crawfish species. They've got these orange lines going down their back and oftentimes you're gonna see these guys under rocks and logs, but they'll oftentimes come out in the morning time to eat and look for different things. They'll eat other crustaceans, fish, and uh, pretty much anything that's dead or rotting. They'll also eat any kind of vegetation that's around their burrow. These guys are a burrowing species of crawfish, and uh, I really don't know a lot about this species in particular, but it's a very interesting thing to see. And I think I'm actually going to hold on to this little guy. I'll bring him back at another point. I think I've got a little container. Back. Yeah. some water in this. Now obviously, not going to keep him permanently. I always like to research things that I've never found before. And crawfish are really easy. So there we go. There's his little container there. And uh, obviously when I'm done getting some research on him and uh, learning about this guy, I'll bring him right back to the same spot in this river and uh, let him go. Let's keep going. There's a really deep spot in the river right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to hop over this little peninsula and uh, get around that deep spot. This river often has really deep drop-offs near the turns, and we're not traveling by kayak, so we have to hop up on land and go over to the next shallow stretches of river. Even on these small river peninsulas, you'll have some interesting animals living right alongside the water. Oh, check this little guy out. What are you doing, bud? Hello. It's a great tree frog. What are you doing? What? That's okay. That's all right. Have a look at this little fella. That's a big, gray tree frog. This is one of my favorite tree frog species out here. They've got that beautiful white coloration, and they look just like the bark. As you can see, all the different patterning. This is actually one of the larger tree frog species that we have out here, and they're a little bit less common here. Up north, they become a little bit more common because there's less competition from other frog species like green tree frogs and squirrel tree frogs. But uh, down here, they're a little bit less common. You'll oftentimes see them hiding along logs, but oftentimes the most common place to see them is actually at night, uh, hunting around lights, which is interesting. Oh, check this out. I've actually never seen one with this much yellow on him. It's okay. It's okay. Have a look at that. His legs are yellow, bright yellow. 
gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And uh, I'm gonna put him down in a second. Obviously, you don't want to handle amphibians for too long, but uh, he's a very cute little guy. He'd be out here just kind of relaxing for the day, and come nighttime, he'd be hunting around here. They become most active during the rain. Oftentimes, you'll see these guys out on the road on rainy nights, and uh, they'll be pretty much anywhere. They're very adaptable species, but it's really cool to find them out here by this river. I'm gonna go ahead and put him back, and uh, we're gonna keep moving. Here you go, bud. See ya. The animals that live in this area are normally super aware when you walk down these river systems. They can hear or see you coming way before you hear or see them. And oftentimes they will leave signs that they were in the area. Right before we walked up, there was a soft shell turtle sitting here. And the way I can tell that is the shape of this little circle here and how he took off, and this was just now. It's really interesting. There's no soft shell. Oh, I don't think there's a soft shell down there. No. But what they'll do is they'll bury, and uh, if they feel somebody walking up, sometimes they'll take off into deeper water. Yeah, check this out right here. It's a beaver stick. <laughs> Have a look at that. You can see where the beaver's gone and cut down a stick. There's most likely a beaver dam further down this river. So uh, as you can tell, there's all kinds of stuff that uh, hang around this river. I find it interesting how when you go to look for a specific animal species, you're oftentimes going to find something completely different. Today, I was kind of more or less keeping my eyes open for a turtle, but we ended up finding something super bizarre that I've never actually seen before. Yo, what is that? Is that a salamander? A fish? It's a mud puppy! It's a mud puppy! Don't go nowhere. Don't go nowhere. Oh my goodness! Have a look at this! That's a mud puppy! I've never seen one of these before. Now mud puppies are actually pretty uncommon down here. I've never even seen one of these before. Now these are a salamander, but they actually have lungs and gills, so they can actually breathe the air. And as you can see, just stuck his head up and got a big gulp of air. So I can have him out the water as long as my hands are wet. Another name for the mud puppy is the water dog. These species of salamanders look like nymphs, but this is a full grown adult salamander. These guys spend their entire life in the water and they have external gills, just like a nymph salamander. The Gulf Coast water dog is not an endangered species by any means, but they're really rare, given how not a lot of people go out looking for them. And this was the first one that I've ever found. These salamanders are incredibly fragile, so I do my best to handle them very, very carefully. They look very similar to sirens, but they also have back legs, which sirens don't have. Now mud puppies have really long bodies. As you can see, his He's got little stubby feet in between that long kind of sausage body. Right, let me get some water for him here. Keep him nice and moist. Now, I didn't actually know that they lived in river systems like this. I knew that they lived in little streams up north, but I've actually never seen one along this area, which is pretty crazy to see. Now, this one is almost full grown. They don't get very big. This one's about five inches long, and they probably max out at about six or seven inches. You know, normally during the day, they'll hide under the mud, the leaves, or even in a little burrow along the bank. And then at nighttime, they come out a lot more. They'll eat little fish, but most of the time they're preying on little bugs, crustaceans, like little baby crawfish, and even things like dragonfly nymphs. It's all right, bud. That is absolutely wild. I have to get some really good picture of this guy, because I've never seen one before. Now, they're made for more sandy environments. Unlike an amphiuma that lives in more muddy ditches and swamp areas, these guys are made for clear rivers. And a lot of people will confuse salamander nymphs for mud puppies because salamanders when they're not an adult live in the water have those gill frills mud puppies have a very distinct look and it takes a little bit of time to be able to tell the difference but uh, they are distinctly different after you learn how to tell very cool salamander i've never seen one of these guys before didn't even know they lived in this area and it's an absolutely beautiful species they're a very fragile species and they're actually considered what's called an indicator species it basically indicates whether a habitat is healthy or not and this river is actually fairly pristine. There's a little bit of litter here and there, but for the most part, this river is very clean. Lots of rare species live in here. Lots of very special animals live around here, but they're also very spread out normally. So it's pretty crazy that we were able to find this. In this area, I'd have to guess he's mostly eating crawfish, and I'd have to guess that somewhere around this little divot here, he's got a hole that he lives in, which uh, most of the time you're not gonna see them out during the day, which that's pretty crazy that he's even out. These guys are oftentimes predated on by bass, catfish, and in fact, I'd have to guess that even something like an egret, a larger mud puppy, or a snapping turtle, which all live in this river, 
I would have to guess that those would also eat them, especially being right along the edge. I had no idea that these guys were out here, and it's something beautiful to see, something totally new to me, and uh, I'm really glad to get to show you guys this salamander. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and if you did enjoy, definitely leave a like, and I will see you guys next time. Alright, we're going to go ahead and put him back. Go ahead and swim down in your leaves. There you go. Pick up. This fool is sticking his phone in water. I forgot the GoPro. <laughs> He's sticking his phone in the water to film underwater. It's working. <laughs> if, I, if I keep this end up, then no water can get into my phone. Oh my goodness, you're a madman. It's working. <laughs>